This is the chiller where we were having an oil level issue and we did end up fixing that, but it didn't resolve the main problem. It was a issue, but it wasn't the primary issue. So a part of what I was doing today was I actually found the root cause as to why we were tripping on low suction or low evaporator pressure or saturation at startup when the compressor was able to pump down. Let's walk through that real quick. Let me show you how we improved by adding the oil that got part of our problem fixed, but the actual main issue that led to that call to begin with. So you can see here that the original alarms that was triggering from the beginning has been low evap refrigerant temp. What was happening is every morning at startup, this machine would try to turn on and it was tripping on that alarm and it was doing it fairly consistently. And so we've been trying to work through as to why. If you didn't see the service call where I went through adding or checking oil on an RTAA, then I'd recommend going and checking that video out. But the synopsis was we verified through the sight glass that our oil level was too low in the separator. We only had a couple of inches. We needed a minimum of five up to 10. And to confirm that, we couldn't even get the compressor to fully stage up all the way. So it was cap out in the upper 80s in terms of RLA percentage, and it wouldn't go all the way to 100% when it was being told to. Even though the load solenoid was being activated asking for more load, it wouldn't give it to it. That was due to low oil levels. I'm gonna do a separate video talking about how the oil and the loading on this chiller operate together. After we added the oil and we got that part fixed, we are now able to get the compressor to fully load and stage and even the audible sound dramatically improved with the oil where it needed to be. But we still ended up having issues with it tripping at startup. So my first approach walking up to it is, okay, I know it's happening, why is it happening? So I had them leave the chiller off. I got here first thing this morning and I got to see it go through its initial startup process after it had been able to sit overnight. Now when I did that, it was pretty obvious that within seconds, our EVAP circuit one saturation temp just took a nosedive straight into the dirt and pulled down to like 13 degrees of saturation, which is enough to trigger low pressure safety, which is why we were having that alarm. It's staging way too quickly, but I could come over to the compressor report and I was only seeing roughly 50% on the compressor at startup, which is higher than I, I know that it can be. I know these ought to be able to get down to about 40%, but 50% isn't terrible. So that made me ask the question as to what's actually happening when we go to turn on and run. So we've got a couple of loading solenoids here. We have our female unloader. We also have our two male loaders, which the furthest one back is your load valve. The closest one to you is your unload solenoid. So at startup, part of what I want to see is for the first little bit of runtime, this is going to de-energize. I also wanted to see the unload energized as well. Well, I wasn't really paying attention to my female unloader because, well, honestly, I don't have that many issues out of them, so it's not a go-to for me. But I did verify that my unload was for sure activated and, and my compressor had gone as far as it could go. So I'm going through that process after the compressor had failed once and then tried to turn back on without being able to pump the evap down it's able to grab the load and refrigerant and keep going and that was where it got really challenging but what it also told me is that whatever was happening was because the evaporator was able to pump down and when it's not pumped down because it tripped on safety the last time it tried to run that's when it was able to over pull on the circuit my next thought process went to okay something at startup is happening well that's when i got to thinking well the female unloader is really critical at startup to make sure that we're not overstaging the compressor and that the valve has a chance of keeping up. And it started to occur to me that, yeah, we were actually pulling down way lower than I would have expected at startup on the suction. And I know I've already checked calibration on my EEV and that's not, that EEV is not even a year old. Now, I've had issues with that. I've got a couple of videos where we've had relatively new EEVs fail. So that is absolutely possible. But I didn't think it was my case here. I was gonna put it through a pump down process and I wanted to see it go through a startup. Well, during the pump down, this female unloader right at the end ought to open up to bypass internally for the shutdown after we've already pulled the evaporator down. Well, that wasn't happening. And even after the compressor had turned off, I still had power to my female unloader. That's not supposed to happen. This should have de-energized so that I could fully unload this compressor entirely. 
So that immediately told me that we had a problem there. That led me to the control cabinet of, okay, why do I still have that? And I was able to read through the schematic and I was able to find, coming off of my 1U5 or my compressor A module, I was supposed to come down to terminal 13 and that was my leaving output to that solenoid. Now 88A was the input from the control module and then 88B was the output going to the compressor. Well, I noticed I only had wire 88A landed on terminal 13. There was no 88B. Well, digging through the schematic, I could see that, you know, J7 terminal number 9 coming out on 88A and B on 1TB3-13 was supposed to be where I was. But whenever I got to looking for it, because, okay, well, if it's not here, then it's got to be somewhere. I found it on terminal eight. Well, terminal eight, which was all the 62 wire terminations, was my L1 feed coming off of my transformer. What that would mean is that it was getting constant power from the 120 side of the control circuit, which is not okay. That explains as to why it was getting 120 all the time, because I'm on my 120 bus. So I unplugged it from eight, plugged it into 13, that's when I lost my 120 to the solenoid and it was able to deactivate. Then I was able to go through a startup and sure enough at startup it didn't activate and I was able to maintain proper evaporator saturation during the startup phase and then when it came time to start loading it energized my female unloader and de-energized the uh, male unloader and energized the male loader solenoid and I started pushing my slide and the compressor began to stage accordingly. So it's working fine now, and I was able to do a full startup from a pump down without issue. So ultimately, somebody at some point, I don't know why, had moved that to terminal eight in order to apply constant power to the female unloader. It doesn't really matter to me as to why. I've tried to think through it. Ultimately, it wasn't correct. That was my main issue for startup. When we have this issue, a lot of times it can be an indicator that the EV is having trouble. It's not stroking right. Or we've got a sensor issue on the saturation sensor or the suction temperature sensor, or the slide valve isn't fully sliding back all the way to unload the compressor, or just all these things were happening. One thing I didn't notate was that at startup, with that female solenoid de-energized, we were able to get 42% on our compressor up here, which was a major improvement off of the 50%. So that explains why I wasn't seeing us get below 50. So everything has come together now. That was our primary issue. In that process, we did find our oil issue, and we were able to get both resolved. So going forward, I don't expect any further issues out of this machine. Granted, I say that every time. We always think that. We have confidence in what we do. Stuff's going to happen. It's going to go bad. It's going to go wrong. It's going to something. So that's okay. I appreciate everybody. MTT, take care of your family. Take care of your spouse. Spend time with your kids. Be careful this summer. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope this helps. I'll see you around.